1492, from Rome, the Pope granted this right to the king, Portugal. It is called the Doctrine of Discovery, where, where people are discovered. As much, so much is done to make them, you know, Christian or to, to make them European. And he said, we grant you full and free power through the apostolic authority by this edict to invade, conquer, fight, subjugate the Saracens and pagans, and other infidels and other enemies of Christ. And whenever established their kingdoms, duchies, royal palaces, principalities, and other dominions, lands, places, estates, camps, and any other possessions, mobile and immobile, do not have goods, found in all the places and held in whatever means, and held and possessed by the same Saracens. All these pagans, infidels, and enemies of Christ, you are to hold this in perpetuity, the kings of Portugal. Now, at that time, the Europeans did not even believe that anybody outside them had a soul. And the strongest moral authority then was the Pope. The Pope had to speak for people to begin to change their perspectives. Uh, there's this story of a formula of baptism for, 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 for Indians and Africans who became Christian. He said, if you have a soul, then I baptize you. Now, it had to be in the year, in June of 1837, that Pope Paul III issued a papal bull called Sublimus Dei, in which he said that Indians and other people of which we have encountered recently have a soul like us. And therefore, they are not to be treated like, like beasts. Either to the Africans will not see that people with souls, and this informs the treatment. Now, this tells us about the perception of difference. Difference is a very, a very, very uh, strong ground for inciting violence. Because for you to be able to dehumanize another person, you have to convince yourself that he's a little bit less human, and therefore you have the legitimate basis for inflicting violence on another person. Now, the Sikhs, the Sikh, Sikh people are people in northern India, the Punjab area. They are militant, their dress pattern is with a, um, a veil on their head, and they have a knife. It's part of their costume. They became such a militant group of people because of their encounter with Islam to the north, which obliterated many of their communities. And they, they, they are the best soldiers in India. They fought so hard in the First World War, they had that legacy for many hundreds of years. Why? because of their encounter with difference. Now, the point I'm making is, the religions of the world have certain tendencies of blending themselves among certain sections of those communities to be used to very, very negative effect. And in building a legal framework of peace, we have to take this into, into, into strong consideration. Um, the accommodation of difference under international law has been a grudging move at the margins. Our dominant frameworks, which was referred to by Professor Ladan as uh, being the constitution being sufficiently equipped to recognize our diversity, for me, is a very plain recognition of diversity because the political structure is constructed in such a way that every single unit of administration is a battleground. And you find out that when you look beyond the surface, it's not just political elites. Different identities keep battling for, because they are trying to preserve something. What is that something? We need to really re-examine this. And for us to effectively build this, we need to see this critically. Whether it, from the moment when it was just northern region, those, those frictions were there. When more regions were created, they persisted. We have 36 states today, the frictions are still there. Let me take Benjamin State, for example. The I met an Igama person a few days ago. He said they want to want their upper state because the two people and the three people are relating them. Well, a new state has been created. But you see, the structure of organizing the state derives from a hegemonic construct in such a way that every attempt at creating a new unit creates a new battleground. Many people are still agitating for new state creations. Well, they may call themselves to run out of South Africa or upper state or some other state somewhere. But as long as they continue to ignore the fundamental nature of the African Eurocentric diversity society, you would create new states, but then you would have set up new stages of conflict. That is what community justice proposes. Now, looking at you 
and the Darwinian theory of the origin of species. Darwin propounded a theory that has very enormous effect because it influenced many of these atrocities we saw in history. He said that species are bound to compete and the superior ones will wipe out the others. And that was a justification for wiping out many indigenous communities around the world. In fact, as of 1920, the practice of taking people from Africa and other Indian communities and exhibiting them in zoos beside monkeys was still prevalent. The story is told of Otto Benga, who was taken from the Central African Republic to the United States. He was put in a zoo amongst others. The people in the zoo, they found him. The man be touching the three bananas at him. He was taken by a missionary. His only cry was return me home. But because of the breakup of the First World War, he was not taken home. Well, he was able to lay his hands on the face peacefully of his master. And who did he shoot? He shot himself. He rest in peace. Now, this makes you understand when you see others, when people, some see others as different and begin to categorize them in derogatory terms, it triggers very strong influences, very strong feelings in people. And this is the reality I think our legal framework ignores. And where these people have the capacity to unleash violence in real, where they don't, they die away. Today, there's a mysterious uh, phenomenon uh, amongst the aborigines that was of Australia. Many of them just drink and die. They have been taken away from their ways of life, from their ambitions with nature, the way they view the world. This is what someone like Thomas Akempis would call um, the monkey's salvation. Not Thomas Akempis, sorry. Um, an Indian writer, Tony De Mello, yes? He called it the monkey's salvation for the fish. The monkey sits in the tree and sees the fish drowning inside water. And he goes into the water to rescue the fish from the ground and lands it on the tree. He has saved the fish. <laughs> and in many aspects of the intercultural relations, what we actually do is engaging in giving a monkey salvation for the fish. These Australians can connect with their world, but they are so confident they are not really soon. That's why we look at the barrier, these certain things are spelled out. The extreme form of treatment of people is genocide. Wipe them out. The final solution. Stop all this problem of um, the Armenians, the Ottomans, wipe them out. The Germans, 